Hello everybody and welcome back to Cooking with Grandma. Today I'm going to be making a new recipe for us. I'm going to kind of learn this together as we go. I have never made this before. Now it is actually called Dutch apple pie cookies, but I, it calls for apple pie filling. I don't have apple pie filling, but I have blueberry pie filling. So I'm going to follow the recipe exactly, except I'm going to use blueberries instead of apples. So this recipe is from Gailey, the Gailey Cheese um, Sour Cream Company, their, their website. So and now I have never made a pastry in a food processor before either. Um, this is well, a blender, but it's got the pulse button. I've never done it that way. I've always just mixed it. So I'm going to try it because that's the way it's written just to see because it's new to me. And I want to see if this might be a new way to make um, it basically your cookie dough or what it's going to be. So for the pastry, we need to pulse the flour and the icing sugar and salt and then add our butter, sour cream, and egg yolk and pulse it till it just comes through. So we need one and a half cups of flour. Let me get my measuring cups out here. This is a whole new way of doing, making a pastry dough, but you know what? You, you have to try new things once in a while. You can't get a new recipe happening. You know, after a while, you get the stuff that you make all the time. It's good, but it just gets tiresome. You always want to new make new recipes. We've got one and a half cups of flour. To that, we're going to put two tablespoons of icing sugar. This bag open here. This is, sounds like it's kind of like a shortbread dough um, so with the ingredients listed in it, except for the sour cream. I'm not sure about that, but that's because it's from that company. So I want two tablespoons of icing sugar in. And salt. It doesn't say how much salt. It says pulse flour with icing sugar and salt, but it's got one and a half cups of flour, two tablespoons of icing sugar, and salt with no measurement. So I'm guessing maybe that means it's a pinch, so I'm going to put two shakes of salt. All right, we're going to pulse this together. Till it's mixed up. You don't have to get it too, too mixed because you're putting other things in it. So then we're going to add the butter, the sour cream, and the egg yolk, not a whole egg, and pulse. Um, you pulse that just until the dough comes together in a ball. All right, so we need two thirds cup of butter. almost measured out two-thirds cups of sour cream because I opened that container first and uh, I don't know what it calls let's see yeah it only calls for a fourth of a cup of sour cream so we didn't wouldn't want to add that much okay I'm going to take my lid off and put two-thirds cup of butter one-third and two thirds. Two thirds cup of butter. And we need one fourth cup of sour cream. Scoop that out with my new measuring cups and put that in there. Okay, so add butter, sour cream, and egg yolk. Okay, I didn't put the egg yolk in. I need to separate my egg. It just wants the egg yolk. I'll get a bowl here and separate. I do have one of those egg separator things, but they usually don't work. The egg yolk usually slides right through the 
little hole so I just do it back and forth inside the shells you know you just go back and forth I think I've showed it on one of my other videos we're gonna set the white aside I don't think we need that but I'll see maybe later on in the recipe okay so now we're going to pulse that just till it comes together <laughs> That's not good. Nothing's happening. Let me just give it a little bit of a stir. Maybe something's clogged in there. Well, now, all right. It looks like I'll be mixing this by hand because for some reason this is not working. I know this is a blender, not a food processor, but. It's got the pulse button. I just assumed it would work the same way. No. Okay. So plan B. No big deal. Get a mixing bowl out. And plop it all into the mixing bowl. Get all that out of there. I guess, oh yeah, I can see what happened. It got all clumped up and stuck on the blades. So that's why it didn't mix. I'm just going to unscrew the bottom of this, take the blades out, and scrape all that off of there. There we go. That's what happened. That's why it wouldn't pulse. Okay, see, lesson learned. You can't use a blender to pulse dough like that. So back to the old-fashioned way, <laughs> mixing it by hand. Get your spoon going and go right, right get in there it's oh look how easy you should have just done this right from the start now i've got an extra appliance to clean okay now it does say to chill this for an hour or so before you roll it out so i will put it in the fridge just while i am making the rest of i have to make the um the topping and Mix that all in and then the so I'll put it on a plate and put it in to chill it just for a couple minutes it's not cold it's a little chilly in here today so it's not like it needs to be chilled it'll roll just fine on the uh, out on the counter okay so for the topping we uh, so also well you use a pa no sorry you use a pastry blender or fork it doesn't say to use the blender the thing so i'm going to start with the fork i do have a pastry blender i'll get that out i use the pastry blender i have one if you don't have one a fork works just as well so we need to blend the flour the sugar the butter and the cinnamon until crumbly so we need one half a cup of flour Almost at the bottom of the barrel here, the flour. Just enough. Perfect. I have to refill my canisters. So a half a cup of flour. And we want a fourth of a cup of packed brown sugar. Okay, a fourth of a cup of brown sugar. And one fourth cup of softened butter. Blend the flour, sugar, butter, and cinnamon. Okay, I knew there was one more thing to add to it. Okay, butter in there. And get all that kind of one of it. Make sure it's all out because then your measurements are going to be off if you don't get it all out of there. And Let's see, butter and one teaspoon of cinnamon. This is going to be for the topping. So you got your pastry, like your cookie, and then the filling, and then the topping. So we're going to mix this around 
with our pastry blender. Get all that butter incorporated into it and that makes it crumbly. Can I think use the blender? Um, it says to pulse the pie filling until it's you know a little bit finer because um, you're putting it on top of a cookie rather than in a pie, so you don't want big pieces. Although with blueberries, it might be all right. I'll, when I open the can, I'll see if it makes a difference. If I need, if I think I need to make it, chop it up a little bit. Okay, that's easy. All done, and it's nice and crumbly, just the way it should be. You just see how that looks. All nice and crumbly. So we set that aside until we do everything else. I'm going to set that over here on the table. Now, okay. Okay, let me see. Pulse apple pie filling in a food processor or mini chop until it's finely chopped but not pureed. Well, like I said, I'm going to open up my can of blueberry pie filling and see if it needs to be chopped up. are a lot smaller than pieces of apple. So let me see how this looks. Okay. Oh, yeah, for sure, I don't need to do anything to this because it's they're small enough pieces. Okay, perfect. So now what you have to do is you have to get your dough and roll it out like you would cookie dough. oven, I'm sorry, out of the fridge. Mm -hmm. Sorry, well, not yet in the oven. And we're going to put a little bit of flour down on the board. And roll this out. Let's see. Use a cookie cutter to cut into two inch rounds. And place on parchment paper lined. I have my silicone pads. I don't. I'm not. I can use. I do have parchment paper, but because I got those, and they work so amazing, they're wonderful. I might just get a few more of them, so then I have it if I want to make more than um, two sheets at a time. But you know, you can take those, take the cookies off of the one sheet before you. And then use the same one over again. It doesn't matter. You only can fit two. Really shouldn't put cookies on two different shelves in your oven. They cook differently if they're on the bottom shelf versus the top, the middle. So my oven is you can have, I can have two kind two in at a time. Okay, so I got that rolled out easy peasy. I'm gonna get my glass. I don't have a cookie cutter that's a circle. I do, but it's very small. I'm gonna cut these out. This is going to make, well, these are pretty big rounds. These are a little, I think these are actually a little bigger than two inch, but that's okay. We can always make more dough if I want to make more cookies. This is just a new recipe, and I like to try new things and, you know, follow the recipe as it is, and you get however many you get out of it. That's how many you get. So this makes six, and I still have, I can still roll, I can get a few more. So let me go ahead first and top these, and then bake them off, and we'll see, because it, uh, it doesn't say how many cookies they're supposed to get. Sometimes the recipes will tell you, you know, makes a dozen, makes two dozen. I, uh, I'm assuming that it um, depends on how big you make your cookies. Okay, so I rolled out my cookie cutter, or cookies. Now I'll place half a teaspoon of apple pie filling in each of the center round. Okay, half a teaspoon. 
in each one. Doesn't seem like very much, but maybe it spreads during cooking. So we'll just go ahead and follow the recipe. These are maybe a little bit bigger. You know, I'm going to measure. I want to see how big these cookies that these rounds are. See if they are bigger than. Oh yeah, they're like they're three inch. They're three inch. So I could put just a titch more filling because they are an inch bigger. Stir it up. There's more sort of gel kind of like the not as many blueberries as I was thinking as I was hoping okay some are going to have more blueberries than others by the looks of it so I'm going to just go ahead and add a little bit more to the first couple when I've only put half a teaspoon I'm going to put another half a teaspoon kind of fill them up a little bit better there this one can use a little more now, if I put too much on and it overflows, then I'll know for next time if it's, you know, if it flops out over it. So then after you put those, top with one teaspoon of crumb topping and gently pushing it down till it adheres onto the cookie. There go. One teaspoon. I just guesstimated. I just picked up some of my hand. Just push it down just gently. There we go. Very gently. These actually are looking pretty good. Let me get another spoon. Okay. And there I can put it by the spoon and I can just pat it with the back of the spoon to press it in. So that makes it easier. So these are going to be blueberry pie cookies rather than apple pie cookies. Last one. Okay, so that you now it takes about 15 minutes to bake. 15 minutes are golden brown. So I'm going to start my oven at 10. Um, it is at 350. Now this recipe calls for. Um, let's see where is it. Oh okay, yeah, okay, 350. Some call it for higher. So okay, 15 minutes. I'm gonna put my timer on for 10 minutes and see what happens after 10, just to make sure that that's not, you know, I don't want to overbake them. I can always add a few minutes to it. Adding is easy. Taking away, you can't. It's not gonna happen. Okay, so I will let you know how they come out in just a few minutes. Alrighty, I, it's been 15 minutes. I did start my oven at 10, but it did take the whole 15 minutes. And they come out very nicely. These are going to be tricky to eat. i got to tell you, maybe it will be different if I do it with apple pie filling versus blueberry, but they're going to be a little, <laughs> little messy to eat. But that's what they look like. So these are apple pie, blueberry apple pie cookies. Okay. Very easy to make, very few ingredients. And it did not take that long. This recipe got me 12 3 inch rounds. The recipe said to do a 2 inch round cutter. I had a 3 inch round, that's what I used. So I got a dozen cookies. So if you're making them for, you know, a bigger family, you're going to have to double your recipe. So there you go. I will upload the recipe and all the ingredients listed below and the cook times and everything you need. So um, you all can try it and let me know how you make out. I mean, let me know if you try it, how they worked for you, if you use a different kind of pie filling, and uh, whatever you'd like me to see me make, let me know. So have a good day, everybody. Bye.